Welcome to the News Hour. Tens of millions of Americans tuned into last night's consequential presidential debate between Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump. The contentious debate may be the only face off of the campaign season. Vice President Harris tried to walk a fine line between being both an incumbent and a change candidate, all while fending off attacks from Donald Trump. And the former president was repeatedly fact checked for inaccuracies. Laura Barone Lopez reports. Kamala Harris, let's have a good debate. Let's see, have fun. The night began cordially before the gloves came off. World leaders are laughing at Donald Trump. I have talked with military leaders, some of whom worked with you, and they say you're a disgrace. She got zero votes, and when she ran, she was the first one to leave because she failed. It was their first face to face meeting and their first head to head clash on the issues like on the economy. I have a plan, $6,000 for young families for the first year of your child's life to help you in that most critical stage of your child's development. I have a plan. She copied Biden's plan, and it's like four sentences, like run, spot, run. Four sentences that are just, oh, we'll try and lower taxes. The former president tried to link Harris to President Biden. She is Biden. You know, she's trying to get away from Biden. I don't know the gentleman, she says. She is Biden. Clearly, I am not Joe Biden, and I am certainly not Donald Trump. And Harris, a former prosecutor, repeatedly baited Trump. They're so clear, they can manipulate you with flattery and favors. From highlighting his fondness of dictators to needling Trump about the crowd size at his rallies. I'm going to invite you to attend one of Donald Trump's rallies because it's a really interesting thing to watch. You will see during the course of his rallies, he talks about fictional characters like Hannibal Lecter. He will talk about windmills cause cancer. And what you will also notice is that people start leaving his rallies early out of exhaustion and boredom. People don't leave my rallies. We have the biggest rallies, the most incredible rallies in the history of politics. That's because people want to take their country back. For much of the night, Trump was on defense not answering whether he'd sign or veto a national abortion ban. If I could just get a yes or no, because your running mate, Gen J.D. Vance, has said that you would veto it if it did come to your desk. Well, I didn't discuss it with uh, J.D., in all fairness. Look, we don't have to discuss it. Refusing to say if he thought defending Ukraine against Russia was in America's national security interests. I want to ask you a very simple question tonight. Do you want Ukraine to win this war? I want the war to stop. I want to save lives that are being uselessly, people being killed by the millions. It's the millions. Just to clarify in the question, do you believe it's in the U.S. best interest for Ukraine to win this war, yes or no? I think it's the U.S. best interest to get this war finished and f just get it done. And taking no responsibility for his role in the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Is there anything you regret about what you did on that day? Yes, I had nothing to do with that other than they asked me to make a speech. We don't have Vice President back. Harris used that moment Let's to appeal to undecided voters. Back. It's time to turn the page. And if that was a bridge too far for you, well, there is a place in our campaign for you to stand for country, to stand for our democracy, to stand for rule of law, and to end the chaos. Moments after the debate ended, Harris picked up a superstar endorsement, Taylor Swift. And in a rare move for a presidential candidate, Trump went to the spin room afterward. Over the last 24 hours in multiple Fox News interviews, Trump questioned whether he'd do another debate and said ABC should lose its license. Uh, it was three to one. It was a rigged deal, as, as I assumed it would be. I think ABC took a big hit last night. I mean, to be honest, uh, they're a news organization. They have to be licensed to do it. They ought to take away their license for the way they did that. Trump and Republicans were quick to attack the moderators for fact-checking him in real time, including really on abortion. Her vice presidential pick says abortion in the ninth month is absolutely fine. He also says execution after birth. It's execution, no longer abortion, because the baby is born. There is no state in this country where it is legal to kill a baby after it's born. And on a debunked conspiracy theory about Haitian immigrants in an Ohio town eating pets, one that's been peddled by far-right activist and 9-11 truther Laura Loomer, who traveled with Trump to the debate.
In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. ABC News did reach out to the city manager there. Uh, he told us there had been no credible reports of specific claims of pets being harmed, injured, or abused by individuals within the immigrant community. Well, All I've this, seen people on television. Let me just say. Katie Sanders of PolitiFact defended the moderators. When a candidate is lobbing conspiracy theories, that's, that's kind of a softball for a moderator, and it's particularly glaring if you don't address that. She said Harris was not immune from critique for leaving out finer details. But it was Trump who required more immediate fact checking. I think one candidate, former President Trump, was repeating conspiracy theories that are pretty well known to be false at this point. And so it's almost easier to call those out in real time. At Ground Zero today, disagreements were put aside. President Biden and Vice President Harris stood just feet away from former President Trump and running mate J.D. Vance as the nation Jeffrey remembered w. the nearly 3,000 lives Susan lost Marie on this Klein. day 23 Stephen years ago. Buckley. The former president and Vice President Harris even shaking hands at the remembrance. But tomorrow, the race is back on, with less than eight weeks to go before Election Day.